So we've got those same numbers, 450 grams of lead to iodide, 500 grams of lead to nitrate. Now what I'm about to tell you is that these two react and you recover 307.9 grams of lead to nitrate. So you put together 450 grams of lead to iodide and 500 grams of iron to nitrate. And out of that, you get back 307.9 grams of lead to nitrate. Question is, what is your percent yield? Good type. Uh-oh. So, this is a multi-step process. You already did the first step. So, when you are faced with a problem like this, step one is, guess what? Figuring out your limiting reagent. You already did that. Okay, figure out your limiting. Why do we want to figure out our limiting? Okay, we said that this was our limiting, right? You all figured out that was the limiting. So how much of the lead iodide, lead to iodide, is going to react? All of it, some of it, most of it? Every single last bit, because we're going to run out. So this is akin to baking chocolate chip cookies your recipe, I'm, I'm all about cookies, your recipe calls for three cups of flour, you have two cups of flour in the house. How much flour are you going to have left over? None. None! You're going to use every single last bit of flour. You're going to scrape the flour bowl. You're going to scrape out the bag. You're going to, you know, every nothing will remain. Bowl. So you're going to use every single bit of this. Is all of this iron nitrate going to react? No. No. So what you have to do to figure out your theoretical yield is to start a factor label with your limit, your limiting reagent. So, step two. Determine theoretical yield. And this is a factor <coughs> label from limiting to product. Okay? So, you're going to start with your limiting. 450.0 grams lead to iodide. Our goal at the end is to have grams of lead to nitrate. You know how to do this. This is not hard. You can do this. So, grams, EBI2, moles, EBI2, EBI2, moles, FE, oops, sorry, EBNO3, two times, I'll get it right yet. PD and three two times grams PD and three two times. When you're doing these kind of problems, you'll notice over on the side I've got all the molar masses already figured for you. It's a good idea. I just jot them down on my paper on the side, so I've got them all. I don't, because in a problem like this, you're going to be using those again and again and again. Figure them out once. Why would you recalculate? Okay, so grams of lead iodide, this is 461.001 mole. One to one mole ratio, we get that from the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And then molar mass of lead nitrate, oh I don't have that one do I? I've got it on my paper. 
331.22 grams of lead nitrate. Okay, get me a number. Okay. 323 point what? Okay, four sig figs. So that's the correct sig figs. You produce 307 grams. How do you find your percent yield? Divide. Divide. So, remember, it's actual, what you really got, over theoretical, what you should have gotten, times 100. So, here's your actual, 307.9 grams. That's what you really produced. What you should have been able to produce was this 323.3 grams. Multiply by 100. 95.24%. 95.24%. Okay. Which is not bad. Actually, that's fairly respectable in a lot of settings. It wouldn't get you a grade in a quantitative analysis class, but that's okay. So you have a 95% yield here. Now, let me ask you this. How is that different than your percent loss? The percent loss is how much you didn't recover. So it's going to be the inverse of this, basically. Percent loss would be theoretical minus actual divided by theoretical. For these things, we will more often talk about percent yield, how much you did get back. Now, if you massed your product afterwards and you had a mass of 350 grams of lead 2 nitrate, what would you suspect had happened? So if you had, if you had a, a actual mass that was bigger than your theoretical... You did something wrong. We, you can't get that. You can't, yeah, you can't make... This is the maximum amount of lead nitrate you can possibly make with those reactants. You cannot make a single, you know, tenth of a gram more. So if you get a bigger number than your theoretical, your reactants were probably wet when you mass them, or they were contaminated, contaminated. you had other stuff in there. Um, something has happened, you've made a mistake. All right. It's not that hard, but remember that it's a, it's a multi-step process. So step one, figure out your limiting. Step two, determine your theoretical yield. And then step three, um, compare actual and theoretical. That's given to you. Oh, okay. So that's that's a given. Um, there are, there are two ways that that this can work. So when you're doing a percent yield problem, there are three pieces of information you're working with. Um, once you get down to step three, you're working with your actual, your theoretical, and your percent yield. So two of those have to be given to you or the means to find them given to you. So here, I didn't give you your theoretical yield, but I gave you everything you needed to figure it out. I could give you your actual and your percent yield and ask you what your theoretical was. And then you're just solving a three-part equation. So you could like possibly, if we get that problem, we could possibly do like three factor label? No. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why you only have one of these on your test. Yeah. The last couple problems in your book are limiting or are um, percent yields. So I'd suggest you look at them. There are none that are set up like this, but I will give you one to practice. So I'll erase all this and then I'll, I'll video the one I'm going to give you to practice and you can work on that. Okay, questions, comments, concerns?